Next up, another great presentation, an insights presentation on how cloud-based video technology is enabling broadcasters, publishers, and brands to better deliver live and real-time premium content to multiple devices and platforms whilst providing digital-first content optimized for mobile audiences. Please welcome our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, Gareth Capon, CEO of Grabio. Gareth. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Jason said, I'm Gareth Capon, CEO of Gravio. Um, I'm going to give a brief presentation now about sort of some of the trends that we're seeing with, with partners in, in Europe, North America, and here in Asia with regards to creating new, predominantly new formats for audiences which exist alongside and outside of traditional linear television. But probably also to start with just some of the trends that we're seeing in the marketplace is that the context of why we think this is important uh, and why we, you know, why we built the Gravio business in the first place. So uh, much of this won't be a surprise to any of you here, but we are, in most developed markets around the world, we are seeing a, a decline or a flattening off in the tr tr consumption of traditional television. There is demand for content um, on more screens, more devices than ever before, but much of that now is coming from differentiated platforms, OTT platforms, mobile devices, social platforms, and sort of the engine of this growth has definitely been um, the smartphone and the, the development of the mobile internet. We talked in the previous panel about connectivity, some of the challenges of connectivity, but actually the, the opportunity that, that the mobile and social internet provides is not only um, the ability to talk directly to consumers, but also to be actually to deliver services, potentially personalized services, including video, to the hands of people all around the world. You have billions of devices, and, and we're seeing you know, hundreds of millions of new smartphones being connected around the planet every, every year. There's also a question here about business model. As we look at the, sort of the economics and the structure of, um, uh, of, of, of TV companies and video across the world today, we're seeing a significant and often accelerating change in the way that the, the TV and video is both, uh, is both packaged, consumed, and distributed. These are some metrics from the US. And, and what we're seeing now is that you know, the traditional pay TV is, is in, a, in, a, in an area of at least stagnation, if not somewhat decline, but a rapid and accelerating growth in OTT uh, consumption. So that, you know, the total number of OTT subscribers across you know, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, et cetera, in the US now surpasses the traditional t um, pay TV business but clearly, there's also a difference here in revenue. If we're looking at the, you know, the absolute revenue of those companies, there's, a, you know, there's, a, there's a still a big dislocation. There's a lot more money today in pay TV or, or ad-funded linear television than there is in OTT services. But the growth, the adoption of these, of these products is, is accelerating. And it talks a lot not only to the, the future of what maybe business models for TV and video look like, but also what the demand perspective is for consumers in some of these markets. And this isn't just true for the US, it's actually true on a global basis. When we look at it from a demographic perspective, there's probably an even more stark and often quite obvious change. The, the younger demographic groups are beginning to consume less television more quickly and, and less of it more of the time. You know, if you are you know, growing up now and you, you've been born probably in the, last, in the last 10 years, you've grown up in an environment where you didn't necessarily need to watch linear TV to get a content experience. And these consumers, as they get older, are going to, are going to be looking for services, looking for providers who can give them the type of video experience, the content experience that they're used to. Some of that may be on demand, it may be distributed, it may be on a mobile device, it might be on a social platform, it might be live, it might be on demand, it might be community-led. But, that, but on the flip side, we've, actually got a, we've also got an aging population who will potentially watch increasingly more TV. So from a provider standpoint, it's actually quite complicated to think about how you come up with you know, the content propositions and the business models which actually support this quite dislocated audience. The other thing to think about is, is platforms and devices. What is universally true across the world now is that as consumers, we expect to have content video on a multitude of platforms and devices. We tend to expect to have it whenever and wherever we want it. And this is driving 
you know, different, different models in the market, but also bringing in new players into the TV ecosystem. I mean, you're going to see in the next panel with, you know, DAZN, obviously a, a, an OT, a, a sports-focused OTT service. You've got Twitter and Facebook on the panel too, who are now both distributors and acquirers of rights. You know, you look at Facebook's recent deal in India, you know, that's a, that, that would have been seen as relatively transformative five years ago that a major social platform will be bidding for, you know, for major rights in, a, in, a, in, a, in an Asian territory. But now, as we've seen similar moves from, from Amazon and also from Twitter, some, some, obviously from YouTube also in the US, the, the, the ecosystem of what content and delivery looks like is, is fundamentally changing, and it's changing quite rapidly. And this is really being driven by the fact that consumers have, 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 have shown by their use and their behavior of devices about how and what they want to consume their content. And importantly, when you look at, you look at mobile, you look at social feeds, you, see, you need different types of experiences which meet the demands of those consumers. And one of the, certainly for the context of our business, this idea of delivering something live or in real time is really important. The information is readily available. We, we, I heard in a panel earlier today which was talking about latency and saying that there's a real challenge often with OTC services. If you're 20 or 30 seconds behind, you might find out what's happening in a game on Twitter before you actually watch it on television because you're watching a service which may be delayed over the internet. It's clearly one of the, you know, the, the continuing benefits of the delivery services on, on linear television and, um, and traditional TV networks. But my expectation is clearly those latency challenges will be solved over time and, and it will not necessarily be about de de delivery, it's going to be about content, it's going to be about experience, it's going to be about price point and business model. So from a, I'm going to give a quick brief overview on Grabio just so um, everyone in the room knows who we are um, and gets a background on the business. Um, Grabio is about a four and a half year old company. We were founded in, in London. We now have offices in, in New York on the west coast of the US. We've opened um, uh, an office here in, in Asia. Um, in Singapore and also now one in, in Sydney. We've, we do a lot of content. We did 19,000 live events um, last year and, pro and most of that comes through our, our, our integrations with the social platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, but also traditional mobile applications, OTT services as well. From a product perspective, we, we focus on a number of tools and services for media companies and publishers, live clipping, editing, live streaming, live production, but specifically focused around getting content out to a multitude of platforms, to audiences who may not be w w watching in a traditional setting and, and whose demands may be different depending on the platforms on which they're consuming that content. And I'm just going to go through now just a couple of examples just to show you what a few of our other partners in, in Europe and North America and here in Asia are doing with the platform and, and how that may be relevant to some of your business in the future. From a customer perspective, you know, we, we focus a lot on sport, obviously sitting in the sport track today, but actually our business also expands across um, broadcast, news, entertainment, music, um, but we definitely have a, a core sports heritage and work, as you see here, with a number of the, sort of the leading sports properties um, around the world. So first of all, live production. You know, what, this is one of our, one of our products. It's a, it's a browser-based video switcher, and this allows you to create experiences, but potentially utilizing existing productions which may fit better on a, for a mobile social audience. So example here from, from Formula E, a fairly simple example. This was take, taking their host broadcast feed and creating a different service for Facebook and YouTube, which was, as you see, using a slightly different graphics experience, but also bringing back feedback from the audience. Just a simple thing of showing comments from users in real time on, on, the, on the device, on a mobile device, so people were getting immediate um, feedback, they felt part of that experience, and so therefore watching the race on Facebook was slightly different to watching it on traditional television. This here is another example of how we're thinking about consumption in a feed. Again, this is the same race, it's the same host broadcast, and in this example, we're just using a different set of graphics to make sure that this jumps out to a viewer who may be scrolling through a feed on Facebook or on Twitter to see that content. So you get to see Nelson Piquet you know, cheering, it's very obvious, you'd pick that up in a feed if you were watching, but at the same time, you, get to, you can dive straight in and watch in the same live race. Another example here was with Fox Sports. This is an OTT example from the US Open Golf this year. In this case, it was creating an experience specifically for golf fans, which sat outside of the traditional broadcast. Again, they were using um, feeds coming from the course, a number of, uh, a number of feeds directly from uh, a few key holes, and, it, and all of the, the graphics and the data experience which was built around that was then delivered to the Fox Sports Go app. 
Again, this is content which you're a real golf fan. You'd be, you'd be really interested in the, in the data around velocity, um, driving ranges, what's happening on the course. But this wouldn't really sit so well in their traditional linear broadcast. It's quite hard to cover a golf event. There's a lot going on. So in this case, people could jump into the app. They could go specifically to the section to, to watch the holes and get that slightly enhanced and augmented experience which sat alongside the traditional broadcast. Another very successful example this year, some of you may have seen this, but we work with the FA and the England team uh, right through the, the World Cup this year uh, on location in Russia, a daily live show on YouTube, and produced very simply a couple of cameras on site, a local production, all of the graphics, all of the user feedback, the comments, the interactivity was produced remotely using Gravio in London. It's a very low cost, very simple to do, but actually a really engaging experience for fans, F fantastic response from the media, and really gave an insight to the England camp that's never been available before. But it didn't take enormous amounts of production, it wasn't hugely complicated, and it was managed by a very small team who could be on site with the team and give that specific insight and that behind the scenes sort of perspective that the fans were looking for. An example here in Asia, talking about real time publica and publication, sort of getting content and moments out in real time to different audiences. We work with MediaCorp here in Singapore. Um, you know, they do lots of events, lots of shows. And in this case, this is, this is very simple. It's saying, how do we take some of the key moments of the events, of the entertainment, of awards, and make sure that's distributed as broadly as possible, as quickly as possible in real time? So in this case, they're just getting content out on Twitter, on YouTube, Facebook, maybe on Instagram, and allowing those, those audiences who might not be watching on traditional linear TV, they may be in a different demographic group, they may just not have been in front of the screen at the time, to have access to those, those pieces of content, to share them, to talk about them, to drive engagement, and fundamentally to hopefully drive tune in back to, the, to the, the main TV screen and the linear channel. And then finally, this is another example from a, from a client in Asia. This is actually our work with the AFL, the Australian Football League in Australia. And then this is a very simple example. But here, they're taking content from the archive. They're simply repurposing it for a, for a social format, in this case, creating a, a square asset rather than a horizontal asset, because square videos work better in the feed on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, and then publishing it out there out to the audience. It's very simple. It's very easy. It's very fast. You don't need lots of traditional production and editing skills to be able to do it but you've taken content, you've created new value from it, you've created new opportunities for sponsors, and you've basically reused some of your existing assets and rights, but repurposed it for an audience which is going to be viewing it on a different platform. So that's a quick overview um, of our business and some of the examples um, of, the, of the clients we work with in, here and in other markets. As we move forward, uh, I just want to mention this because we, we announced it this week. Uh, one of our big, big product pushes this year is around, around editing, creating simple and collaborative editing tools to sort of sit alongside some of our production and clipping services. But it, look, feel, like, this has been relatively rapid. I hope you haven't, I haven't rushed through this too much. Feel free to grab me um, or Elliot or one of the team here after if you want to learn any more. But I just want to thank you for your time uh, and I look forward to, uh, to the next presentation. Thank you.